Thank you. So, welcome everybody to the next part this afternoon. This is strategies to elevate your company's performance. Um, some of the training are hosting this. My name is Anne Thompson and I'm the Managing Director. Um, really, we decided to put this part together because Rich had approached us and was talking about the idea of this conference and said we'd love to have Sandra training speaking, but what's a good theme? And we thought, as we saw already from the piece earlier by the left, that there are so many businesses in Oxfordshire who have grown well, have a solid base of clients already, but are looking for what is the next thing I need to do to really take my company to the next level, and whatever the next level is to you. So that is the theme of what this pod is dedicated to today. Uh, we have four great speakers. Uh, we're on first, and then it will be Alison, Lydia, and Cafe Success. Both of you, one of you, just yourself. So, I will kick us off then. Really, at Sander Training, we specialise in sales development. Because sales are the lifeblood of any business. We know that we always need to get new business in, and if we think we're fine, we're just happy where we are, it tends to mean we're shrinking, we just haven't found out yet. So, I'm going to start with a Sandra rule. If you can't sell anything to anyone, they must discover they want it. Everybody think for a second, the last time you were a buyer and you had a salesperson in front of you, and they did the hard sell. Typically, if we bought from them, it was because they had something we really wanted, rather than because of the pressure they put on us as a salesperson. Fair? Yeah, see some nods around there. Because it really doesn't work. We have to look at, if particularly if we're business to business, we have to look at what is that consultative approach to growing our business. And Sandler have been in the UK now for 13 years. We have 28 offices, and we work with thousands of salespeople every week, and hundreds of business owners in Oxfordshire alone um, every week. So I have I've seen it all. And there really are five reasons, no matter what your industry is, five main reasons why we don't close business when we think we should. So picture for a second in your mind the last deal you didn't win. I, I know we like to say we win them all, but we don't. You know, not every prospect deserves to be our client. So picture in there the last deal we didn't win, whatever it was. And it's likely we didn't win it for one of these five reasons. Either the prospect was not set up to make a decision. They thought we were just sitting down for a cup of coffee to find out more about what you do. You thought we were talking about serious business and signing a contract, contract at the end. Often, the salesperson is more focused on themselves than the prospect. Not because they're bad people, salespeople, I love salespeople. But actually because they love what they do. They got excited about the technical aspects of what it is they were selling and talked about it too much and didn't get the business. Third reason was they sounded the same as the competition. Another sound the rule we have is if you look like, sound like, act like every other salesperson calling upon your prospect, how will you be treated? Just like everybody else. And then two others here. Budget was unknown, or the decision process was misunderstood. Now, obviously not the people in this room, but perhaps if it was someone else in our team we're thinking of, and that's why we lost the business, these two can kill us. We didn't really ask what the budget was. We did a kind of guessing game. The buyer said, budget is no problem. And we thought, yes. And then we got to the end and it decided that it actually was a big problem. 
or the decision process is misunderstood, and that's code, I'm being nice there, that's probably code for we didn't really bother to ask the questions as to who makes the decision. We made some assumptions there. So loosely, when we lose a, bit, a piece of business, our deal, it's because of one of these. And the reason this is a problem is they tend to come up at the end. And at the end of our sales process, whether it's one week or one year, we've lost our leverage. They've got everything they need from us. And we're left with nothing. Now, most of you should have a handout like so. Anybody not got one? I've got some here. Just stick your hand up. There's a few here coming back. Oh, thank you. There's some here. So, hand up your hand. Got one? Most of you will do. You know, so this is really to get the uh, little grey cells working. It's after lunch. I understand, guys. So, what we've got here is we've got a very difficult exam, actually. We've got the numbers 1 to 100 randomly distributed. And you're all pretty smart here, I can tell. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and we're going to see who can get to the highest number. Because you've got to cross them out in order, so find one, cross it out, then two, etc. And we're going to see who can get the highest. Well, when I say go, I can see some pens going. That would be called cheating. OK, ready? So, ready, steady, go. Then is have a system. 
Because in our businesses, we're likely to have a system for everything else, but not a system for sales. We just go, well, the lead comes in and I follow it up. That's not a system. So firstly, have a system. Secondly, what is everybody, doesn't matter what you do, what is your favourite topic to talk about? What do you reckon? Mm. Ourselves, because we're super interesting. And I'm not going to ask you to do it, but let's say I said, write down on a piece of paper now, what are the top three reasons people buy from you for your business? What are some of the reasons you would have written down? The shout out. Why do people buy from you? Reputation, yep, why else? Trust. Trust, yep, so reputation probably got um, great expertise that builds on the trust, yep, what else? They like you. They like you. Yeah, I mean, for you, I don't get that, I'm not so lucky, but they would like you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it fair to say most of us would have written down pretty similar reasons? We're good at what we do, great service, value for money, they like us, trust. Bad news. That's all about you. And your competitors are saying the same thing. Your competitors are not there going, we're actually really expensive and our service is pretty average. Uh, but we were hoping you'd want to do business with us. Everybody out there is the biggest, the best, the greatest. Any ideas? First meeting with a new person, new prospect you've never had met before. How percentage-wise, much of the time, do you think you as the salesperson should be talking? What do you reckon? Let's put a guess out there. 20%. 20%? Like it. Almost. 30. 70% of the time should be them. However, particularly if you sell anything technical, we get caught down the rabbit warren to talking about what we do, and then we realise the meeting's over, and they've just said, yeah, we're interested in what you do. So the second thing after have a process is make sure your process is prospect focused. They should be talking. Sales is not more, a whole lot more complicated than put something in strong to start with, shut up in the middle and end well. Because the next thing is any meeting you have, you should be able to timeline out like this for a process. Yeah, you should go, when I have a meeting of this size, we always end in these next steps. It always takes this long. And I get it, we don't want to. Because we say things like, well, ev everything's different in my business, which, which, by the way, is code for, I have no idea what a sales process is, and I'm hoping no one asks. It also stops excuses. Because this is an excuse, by the way. They were going to buy this month, but they didn't quite get round to it, uh, so next month it's definitely going to come on, come in. That's an excuse for you or your salespeople saying, I didn't do what I was supposed to this time. Fingers crossed it comes in. And that's hope selling, which is like throw enough at the wall, hoping some of it will stick. So, in summary, you need to make sure you have your process written down so you can map out like so. Any process you have needs to be focused on them, not on yourself. This might mean rewriting your marketing literature, I know. And lastly, one of my favourite quotes. If everything seems to be going fine, you're just not going fast enough. So, perhaps look at it and think everything's in order as it should be. I'm going to say your goals aren't big enough, you're not reaching higher, high enough, you can do better. So, Emily Thompson, Sandra Training. Last thing I'm going to say is in your packs when you leave today, you're going to have an invitation for an event we're running on the 19th of May. It's uh, complimentary to everyone that's at this event today. So if you'd like to register, all the details are on there.